I'm sorry to break it to you, but vampires don't sparkle. On this episode of Battle Guides featuring Demetros. Demetros is a speedster who uses his amazing unique ability, as well as his myriad of movement effects, to devastate his opponents. However, that all comes at the cost of having generally low range, generally low power, as well as needing proper management of his unique ability. Demetros' unique ability is Crescendo! Demetros starts the game with two Crescendo tokens, and gains priority plus one for each of these in his token pool. During the anti phase, Demetros may anti any number of these Crescendo tokens for power plus two each. Whenever Demetros is hit by an opponent, he loses one Crescendo token. However, whenever Demetros hits an opponent, he gains one Crescendo token, up to a maximum of five. This unique ability is what makes Demetros Demetros. It's quite devastating and quite powerful because of the fact that it lets you gain a crap ton of speed and a large amount of power. Now this unique ability basically lets Demetros trade speed for power. Oftentimes, a lot of Demetros' styles have a high amount of priority but a low amount of power. This means that if you don't anti any of your tokens, you're gonna be faster than almost 90% of the characters in this game. However, this also means that you'll only deal 1 or 2 damage on average. That being said, you can then anti your tokens to become a little bit slower, but then gain power plus 2. And note that since a lot of Demetras' styles only have power minus 1 or 2, antiing one crescendo token oftentimes means that you'll deal an average amount of damage compared to a lot of the characters in the cast. This is very, very powerful because technically, Demetras only has to spend one crescendo token to be able to destroy or at least trade evenly with other people. And if you consider the fact that he's generally fast on his styles, plus still gets the priority bonuses from all the crescendo tokens you didn't anti, Demetras turns into a big stat monster powerhouse that can destroy anyone he wants. Now, that all basically means that Demetras has to have a lot of his crescendo tokens. And it becomes very, very hard to manage and proper management of his tokens is key. Um, basically, as Demetras, you want to hit, but not be hit. Trading with the opponent is oftentimes the worst thing you can do because of the fact that getting hit makes you lose crescendo tokens. So, as an adage for almost every single possible Demetras play you can make is you have to hit and avoid being hit. Now, how we can do that is really dependent on his styles, so I think we should go into that now. Now, remember what I said. It's all about hitting and then not being hit. This is a very common theme among all of Demetrius' cards. In fact, I firmly believe that nearly every single one of them has a way for Demetrius to avoid taking some damage. Now, let's start off with... Dark side. Dark side is very strong. See, it might have power minus two, which is average for a Demetras style, but it has priority plus one, which again is average for a Demetras style. However, the things you want to look at are the passive effects as well as the on hit effect. Passively, attacks at range four or greater don't hit Demetras, which is very, very powerful because it lets you dodge the opponent. However, that's really weird on a character who doesn't have any range at all, especially since the style itself has no range either. But look at the on hit effect. On hit, retreat any number of spaces. So this is what I was talking to you about. You hit, then retreat, and then when you're at range 4, your opponent misses. Simple as that. Note that you don't always have to make use of the passive effect to dodge your opponent. If you just retreat enough so that they don't have the range to hit you, it works fine like that as well. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with Drive. You see, uh, Demetras' dark side doesn't have a lot of range on it, and sometimes your opponent can burst you, which will supersede any amount of priority you have because Start to Vites activate before the active player does his attack. This means that using a Drive can be very crucial for hitting your opponent and then moving the heck away. However, if you feel like your opponent 
won't burst or if they don't have burst to begin with, you can play this with a grasp. Now I know that that deals no damage and you might wonder, why would you do that? You see, sometimes your opponents corner you and that means that you can't retreat a lot of spaces with dark side which may be problematic because you might not be able to dodge them. But using dark side to pull your opponent so that they are now in the corner, then retreating can be very very good and give you a lot of distance to be able to dodge the opponent's attack. And don't worry about being at a long range from an opponent even if you're a generally melee character for reasons I'll explain later on. Next up is Jousting. This is why it's okay to be at long range from the opponent, because it has low power, it has high priority, it's a typical Demetra style. However, the thing you want to look at is the start of beat and on hit effects. Start of beat, you advance until you are adjacent to the nearest opponent. Really good. That's really good. Like super freaking good. Because, simply put, you are able to get in no matter where you are. And that's a very powerful tool for a character who's generally melee all the time. But that's just for hitting. What part of it lets you dodge the opponent? Well, the on hit effect allows you to advance any number of spaces. Now, this might not make a lot of sense to you. Like, how can this let me dodge the opponent? But remember that advances determine their direction at the start of the movement effect. Since you can advance any number of spaces, if there's a lot of spaces behind your opponent, just advance a lot and you'll technically just go so far away from them that you're technically just dodging them super hard. When it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this attack with Drive because it allows you to drive past an opponent who's up against the corner, letting you advance past him and dodge him because there's a lot more space now. And you can also pair it with Grass because it does a similar thing but it does it faster and I know it does no damage but again, as Demetras, it's just about hitting and not being hit. If you really want to deal the damage, just anti a crescendo token. Then we move on to Vapid. Vapid is Demetras' only style that has range, so be very thankful for that. It also has priority plus zero and power minus one, which is weird for a Demetras style because again, it has generally high power and it's generally slow. But remember, as Demetras, uh, that power minus one can easily turn into a power plus one by anti and crescendo token, and that prio plus zero can easily become a prio plus four, five, whatever, depending on how many crescendo tokens you have. Now, the thing about Vapid is that on hit, you stun an opponent immediately if their basis priority is three or below. Now, this is very interesting because of the basis that are priority 3 and below. These are Strike, Burst, and Shot. Now that's very, very good because every single uh, Demetras fears Stun Guard. If his opponent is able to brunt his usually weak attacks and hit them back, Demetras trades and he always trades poorly because of his poor power, plus he doesn't get any crescendo tokens out of the deal because he hits, gains one, and then loses one immediately upon being hit again. This is very, very good for counteracting anybody who has stun guard, soak, or whatever. Because usually, those attacks are very slow. So if your opponent pairs their attack with a strike, shot, or a burst, this is almost always a guaranteed way to make sure that they regret doing that. Now that being said, Vapid is still a very powerful attack because of the extra range you get from it. Now when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this with Demetras' unique base Death blow for a lot of reasons that I'll explain later on, but long story short, it allows you to stun the opponent and it lets you gain multiple tokens. Or if you really want to pull out a big payout attack, this is the only attack that gives range. So if you want to kind of make sure that your opponent doesn't dodge your attack, doing a vapid death blow is very, very powerful. However, if that's not your thing and you just want to use Vapid normally, Vapid Shot is another thing you can do. Now, Vapid Shot might not make a lot of sense. Why would you ever do a 2 prio attack that only has Stun Guard 2? The simple answer to that question is because you're Demetras. And as long as you have at least like 3 or 4 Crescendo tokens, it becomes a 5-6 priority attack. That's range run to 5. It's insane and it'll stun almost anything and then you get to deal 2 damage. It's not that bad. Illusory has generally high power and it has amazing priority. But the thing is the reveal effect 
that returns all of the crescendo tokens that you anteed. And then if you have two or less, you basically dodge all opponents who are faster than you. Now this effect is very hard to capitalize on because you're Demetros. You're faster than almost everyone in the game, even with just two crescendo tokens. If you have two crescendo tokens, plus the priority on this, it's Bryo plus three. That's really, really hard to do. Uh, because basically this is a style that's meant to catch your weight if you're losing a lot, if your opponent's been hitting you a lot and you need some way to get back into a game. This allows you to, again, dodge and hit the opponent practically safely as long as you're slower than the opponent. So be very careful about this. Note that it's on reveal, so even if you anti like five crescendo tokens, they'll all be snapped back to you and you'll gain the priority from them anyway. So there's no way to cheat this in order to make it slower. I'm sorry about that. Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this thing with burst. You see, burst is the slowest pace you can play, therefore it's what you play with Illusory to make sure that you get the effect. However, sometimes Illusory isn't just the attack you want to play this beat, and if you really, really, really are desperately uh, in the need for hitting and you don't have burst, using a shot can be very useful as well, because again, shot is the second slowest base you can play. And then we move on to Bloodletting. This is Demetrius's cash out style. Basically, uh, Demetrius's quote unquote big problem is that opponents with lots of stun guard and soak can ruin his day because he deals piddly damage. He deals zero damage most of the time, uh, or at least one or two. So, uh, this is very powerful because not only does it have power minus two, which is, again, on par for Demetras. It has priority plus three on its own, which is definitely scary if you mix it in with uh, with Demetras' ability to gain a crap ton of priority from his unique ability. And then it also ignores Soak, and then on hit you regain life equal to the number of crescendo tokens you anti this beat. Basically, it creates a giant life gap if you hit it correctly. Seeing as it has priority plus 3, you can basically anti up to 3 of your crescendo tokens and suffer no penalty to your priority at all. You'll usually still be fast and given the proper amount of crescendo tokens, you can actually be faster than a dash. Which means that no one is safe from your big payout attack. Uh, it's very, very powerful and the only thing it's really lacking is some hit confirm. So when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing it with, you guessed it, Drive, because it gives it the hit confirm it desperately needs, or if you want to deal the most amount of damage possible, play it on a death blow. And finally, we have Demetrius' unique base, Death Blow. Death Blow is very, very good. It's range 1, power 0, priority 8. 8! This means that if you have priority plus 1, you are as fast as a dash. If you have priority plus two, you beat dash. That's insane. Especially since a lot of damage resistance stats already have priority plus one on them. And if you have a single crescendo token, that's priority plus one. Basically, play death blow and you beat any dash. Almost all the time. And that is insane. Now, the on hit effect is very powerful as well because of the fact that. Demetras usually has to commit his crescendo tokens in order to gain the power from them. This means that he has to trade the priority for the power. However, if you play a death blow, this is not the case. You see, if you don't anti anything, you'll still get the priority from them, and then when you hit, you can spend your crescendo tokens to gain power plus two each, which means that you get both the benefit of the priority and the power of your crescendo tokens in that beat which is super powerful. Note that if you hit the opponent, you gain a crescendo token as well, which lets you add one more thing you can spend on your on hit effect, which can be very crucial for dealing a lot of damage to your opponents. Of course, after activating, if you hit the opponent, you gain an extra crescendo token. This is a very versatile unique base. It's basically a cash out and a safety as well, because you can cash it out by just BAM, deal 12 whatever damage, done. However, you can also use it as a safety because of the after activating effect that allows you to gain an extra crescendo token. Which means that if you dodge your opponent, you can gain two crescendo tokens in one turn. Which is very very good if you're escalating into a very powerful attack or just want to devastate your opponents with like prio plus five everything. 
Now, when it comes to attack pairs, I highly recommend pairing this attack with Vapid for a safety, because you want to stun the opponents with shots and pesky strikes. Or, if you really want a big payout attack, play it with bloodletting and watch your opponents let their bloodlet. <laughs> Demetrius's two overdrive finishers are Symphony of Demise, No Hope, No Escape, and Accelerando. Now we come to the grand finale. Symphony of Demise is a combat overdrive finisher that has low range, low power, high priority, and very powerful effects. Before activating, you can advance up to four spaces, which technically makes this attack range 1 to 5, which is very, very good. And then on hit, you gain crescendo tokens until you have 5. This means that if you have 0, this is a great way of coming back into the game. You get in, you whack your opponent, and then you gain 5 crescendo tokens. However, an alternate use is to simply anti a bunch of crescendo tokens in this attack. And then it gets power plus 2 for each crescendo token that you do, and then you gain up to 5 again. Which is very, very powerful because it basically lets you do a really weirdly big range death blow. Think about it that way. It's kind of like a big range death blow. And if that doesn't impress you, I don't know what will. However, if that's not your thing and you don't want to do this big finishing comeback overdrive, you can also do Accelerando. Accelerando is technically another big payout overdrive finisher. It has range 1 to 2, power 2, priority 4, which is meh. But if you remember that you're Priority from your crescendo tokens and the power from your crescendo tokens still apply to this attack. It's not that bad. And then before activating, you advance as far as possible. And then on hit, you may spend your crescendo tokens for power plus two each. Now this one seems like another death blow, right? See if you have a lot of crescendo tokens, you don't anti them, and then you advance, hit, and then spend all of them. However, the thing about this is that you have to advance as far as possible, meaning that if you're cornered and your opponent is next to you, you will miss with this attack. Oftentimes, what you want to do with this attack is your opponent to be in space 3 or 5, which are the starting spaces of the board, because it almost always guarantees that they will be hit by this attack. Now, the thing is, I usually go for Symphony of Demise, because it's very versatile compared to Accelerando. You see, Symphony of Demise is both a payout attack and a uh, comeback mechanic. So. Think about that when picking your overdrive finisher. Now, when it comes to using a special action, Demetrius really, really likes his cancel. Because much like Hikech, before him, Demetrius hates Burst. He hates it. I hate it. With a passion. You see, Burst basically dodges almost anything Demetrius does. A lot of his hit confirm comes in the form of start of beat effects, but because Demetrius is almost always faster than the person playing Burst, he'll Boom, and then they'll burst away, and you will miss and cry and be sad. And that's like the worst thing that can happen as Demtrust. So, Burst is the thing you have to play around. You don't even have to play around Dash with him, so Burst is the problem here. And so, Cancel allows you to get rid of that Burst, and then suddenly you wreck the opponent for like two turns straight. It's beautiful, it's amazing, and I highly recommend Cancel if you don't plan on using Symphony of Demise or Accelerando. Now, Pulse can also be a very good thing for Demetrius because sometimes he's too far away from the opponent and then needs to get in, but because of jousting and some well-placed dashes and other stuff like that, it's very hard for Demetrius to not be in the range he wants to be in, so Pulse doesn't get that much use. Now let's move on to the part that everybody loves, Demetrius' advanced strategies and combos. Demetrius can be diluted into three main points. Number one, Burst is your enemy. I mean it. Burst is public enemy number one when you're Demetrius because it dodges everything you do. Almost everything you do. Even Vapid Deathblow gets dodged by a regular Burst. And that is the saddest thing in existence. Which means that a lot of your window of power comes when your opponent's Burst is in his discard. Not even Dash because you're Demetrius and you're usually really fast. So the thing is with Demetrius is that you have to watch out for your opponent's burst. Try to keep your drive in your hand in order to counter his burst. And don't worry, if you do get bursted and your opponent hits you, that's fine. Because for the next two beats, he has no burst. Which is the best thing ever because almost anything you do 
will allow you to hit and dodge, which is amazing. Number two, hit and dodge. As damage rust, hitting and dodging is very powerful because it's basically a way for you to gain your crescendo tokens. There's almost no way for him to accelerate gaining it aside from doing a death blow, but oftentimes death blow is very inaccurate and might risk just getting hit and not hitting the opponent at all. So when it comes to damage rust, make sure that all of your attacks allow you to hit and dodge the opponent in some way, be that because you use it to get out of their range or because you use the attack to stun them. Now that is very very good when it comes to managing his tokens and I highly recommend you do it. Do it! Number 3, token management. Now this is very different from hit and dodge because when it comes to token management, it's about when you're anteing your crescendo tokens. Now there are two schools of thought here. Uh, there's my school of thought and then there's the other school of thought. My school of thought is the way my group plays Demetrius. We use his attacks to just hit and dodge all the time, we usually never anteing the crescendo tokens because oftentimes the priority plus 5 is very, very big. Um, and then you ante a lot of them in one beat to crush the opponent who has 10 life left. That's usually how we play Demetrius. We dodge around and then we do a big payout and then it usually kills them in one shot. This is kind of what I like to call clocker damage rust because oftentimes if you dodge around a lot and then near the end of the game hit your opponent hard enough, they will have less life than you and on beat 15 you win automatically. That's a very very good strategy and it's a very powerful thing to do. However, the other school of thought is that you anti appropriately. Anting appropriately requires a lot of knowledge of your opponent's cards and that's very dangerous because it requires a lot of experience. Anteing appropriately basically means that you ante according to the situation you're in. So if your opponent might have an attack that has stun guard 3, you might want to ante a certain number of crescendo tokens in order to break his stun guard and stun him. And then maybe you can stay in melee range because of that. And then maybe you ha might have just enough priority next speed. So on, so forth. You can see how very confusing and how topsy-turvy this can get because of the fact that it's all up to the situation and it's context dependent. And the context is very very crucial when doing this style of play. Personally, I feel that the best way to play Demetrius is to merge these two together. Now you don't spend the entire game just dodging and then doing a big attack at the end because that's predictable. But at the same time, you don't try to anti according to the situation all the time because that gets too complicated. By merging these two together, you're able to find this harmony wherein you're basically doing degenerative attacks that allow you to hit and dodge, hit and dodge, but then sometimes you ante just the right amount in order to hit the opponent and stun them. As an added tip, remember that if you're, if you're at 5 tokens already, you still gain when you hit. So oftentimes it's good to ante 1 because you ante 1, get the power plus 2, and then when you hit, you get it back. So you'll technically always be at 5 tokens just by anteing 1 every single turn. And that turns Demetrius into a really fast character that deals plus 0 to plus 1 at damage all the time. Which is very, very good! Now let's move on to some Demetrius combos. First up, Jousting Drive. I already told you how powerful this thing is and it's a great, great, great move especially if your opponent's cornering himself. Uh, this allows you to get in, switch sides, woods back out. It's amazing to look at on the board, trust me. And it's very powerful and can dodge a lot of things. Next up is Dark Side Grasp. Dark Side Grasp is very powerful as well, allowing you to hit the opponent, move them away from you, and then retreat. It's very, very good and very, very versatile and allows you to gain your crescendo tokens. Finally, we have Bloodletting Deathblow. Bloodletting Deathblow is a very powerful attack, and depending on the number of crescendo tokens you have, you can wreck anybody who has it like below 10 life. So it's a very powerful e game ending attack, and it can win you like any game, I swear, if it hits. Being said, it's basically only countered by burst. So if your opponent's burst is down, look for the opportunity to play your Bloodletting Deathblow and win the game. And that pretty much does it for this episode of battle guys if you like the video or like the game or like this character check the description out below for more level 99 game stuff you want to join our community or talk to any of the other veterans check the description out below want to send me an email or leave a comment or a suggestion check the description out below um that's all there is for this video Demetrius is my friend's favorite character and i've fought this guy at least 
50 times, so I know the things to play around and stuff like that. So just remember that your burst is your enemy. Uh, that much to say, um, don't forget your special action, and thank you, Willabindines. Thank you, and good night.